Anthony Davis all over the court for the Lakers last night as they evened up the series with the Blazers at one game apiece. Now, remember, he had a rough shooting night in game one. This time, Davis dropped a game-high 31 points, 13 for 21 from the field. Also of interest is how effective he was at the center position last night. According to ESPN's stats and info, the Lakers outscored the Blazers by 15 in the 15 minutes in which Davis played the five. Second Spectrum adds that Portland shot five for 22 from the field in the minutes that Davis was at center. So made an impact on both sides of the floor. Scotty, why does AD playing center change so much for the Lakers? Well, he's a tough matchup. I mean, first of all, there's no one can match up with him on any team. But when you put him at the five, it's such an advantage because of his speed, his ability to play outside, opens up the lane for LeBron to be able to get into the paint and make plays. But, you know, seems to me like he wants to be more of a perimeter shooter. So I, I think playing that five position gives him a huge advantage. And for me, I, I got to give Frank Vogel a lot of credit for making a game-to-game -game adjustment. Mm -hmm. and, and here's what I mean. You play AD at the five as opposed to the four. Game one, you're playing JaVale and AD, okay? Mm -hmm. That allows the Portland Trailblazers to play Nurkic, Whiteside at times. That's four seven-footers on the floor. Yeah. For AD, there's nowhere to really go. Mm -hmm. Now you go and put one and he let him play the five. It takes two seven-footers off of the floor defensively for Portland. Now AD can move and groove, and, and you can space those shooters out. He got a ton of space to, room, space to roam, and that changed up the way that series looked yesterday. I mean, it's interesting. I've talked to Anthony a lot about playing at the five versus the four, and he says over and over, I don't mind doing it. I just don't want to do it all the time to the point that, especially during an 82-game regular season, I just get so beat up, and we've seen his injury history and all of that. Frank Vogel has said that Anthony has volunteered at times. He even said at halftime of a big game that they were losing, hey, put me in at the five. I think that'll work better, that sort of thing. Scotty, how much should a guy, is it something they should still use in spots, or from now on in the playoffs, should he just be starting at the five? How much, if it's not a position that he wants to play all the time, but is happy to play some of the time, how much is some of the time? Well, I think some of the time is important. I mean, especially when you're playing with a guy like LeBron James. Let's right. not forget how versatile LeBron is. Right. I mean, he can play anywhere from one to five as well. But when you're able to play LeBron James as a four and play Anthony Davis as a five, there's not too many teams in this league can match up with those two players, especially at those positions. It puts a lot more speed out on the floor, and it gives LeBron that, that lane that he, he wants, that open lane with four shooters out on the court because he's a dominant player himself. And I think for AD, playing him at the five, it takes that second seven-footer off the court, as Chauncey said, yeah. and allows him to work. And also, he's a better rebounder when he plays at the five. He can get in there and get offensive rebounds, which the Lakers need. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree with him. I mean, I mean, as a coach, how do you manage that, right? If a guy says, I don't want to do it all the time, but I want to do it, do you at some point say, it's the playoffs, young man, you're just doing it? Uh, that's exactly where I was going, Rach. I mean, that's good during the regular season. You worry about getting beat up and things like that. But as you well know, Scotty, this is the playoffs. Every game counts. Exactly. Getting beat up is all a part of it. But that's the sacrifice that you make. And I'm quite sure that right now, AD saying, I don't care what you play me at right now. This, this is go time. It's time to go try to win. Yeah, I think you're right. I think he is volunteering whatever we want, and then we'll see what they end up doing. All right, on the other side of that game were the Blazers. They lost Damian Lillard in the third quarter due to a dislocated index finger in his non-shooting hand. When asked about his status in game three, well, last night Lillard said, oh, I'm, I'm playing. And today, Coach Terry Stotts confirmed that, in fact, Dame will play. But he will likely be wearing a splint. So, Chauncey, how does Dame's injury change the series with the Lakers? I'm always fascinated when they say shooting hand. You use both yeah. hands yeah. when you are shooting. You do, but I'll tell you what. The one thing I, I liked first and foremost about it is there's, there won't be any discussion. He's playing in the game, and he, he did that to show the leadership. But anytime you have an injury to your best player, it's going gonna, it's gonna to have an impact on you. Yes, it's his offhand. But in this game, he dribbles a lot with his left hand. You play defense, you touch, and you grab, you know, people. A defender guarding you is going to be slapping down on that hand. Like, it, it, mm -hmm. it's something to worry about. It's going to be bothersome, but this is Dame Lillard. And he's going to come to play, and he's going to be ready. I, I expect him to be, be great again. I mean, and that's just the toughness that he exudes. Chance, I'm going to disagree because I, I've dislocated a lot of fingers uh, playing in the playoff, playing in the regular season. And, yes, if it – 
on your shooting hand, it will affect you. But I, I see this being on his passing hand that it's not going to affect him. And I think Damon is playing with so much confidence and so much poise right now that he feels that he can beat the Lakers by himself. And, and, and I don't see that this injury is going to affect him at all as far as scoring the ball. What is going to affect him is the wear and tear that the Lakers are, are putting on him. Right. They're, they're starting to wear him down. They're sending bodies at him. They're starting to fatigue him. And now that affects his offense. Well, he's played a crazy amount of minutes. Remember, just to get here, right, they basically played 10 or 11 playoff games in a row, and Terry Stotts had no problem. Him <laughs> and CJ, they were over 40 minutes. I mean, it was just – it was a lot. So I can see him getting tired. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in what you said about guys trying to slap the hand. How much, especially in the era you played in, but but also certainly in the early two thousands. I just, I just know 90s. me. Like, what would you do to a guy if you found he had dislocated fingers? I just know me. You know, um, I'm. I want any advantage that I can get. So what do you do? What would you do? I'm gonna be very physical. I'm gonna be slapping that hand. I'm gonna be pulling on. I'm gonna. I'm gonna be doing everything that I can because I know that if that was me, they would be doing the same thing to me. So, it is, it, it is what it is. It's just basketball. Well, I mean, I think if you're the Lakers, it's got to be the game plan. It's got to be, hey, force him left. He's got a dislocated finger. Let's mm -hmm. keep him going left. And, right. hey, if he go to the hole, we're going to give him hard fouls. Yeah. We're going to make him earn his points, or we're going to make him utilize his teammates to beat us. Dame is up for the challenge. Make no mistake about oh, yeah. it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be good. It's Saturday night on ABC, too. So get ready for fight night. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.